Hi guys, so I've just got in from town and I've literally just decided that I wanted to do a vlog style wrap up this year, this month for March. Um, so I'm going to do that if I remember. So instead of coming at the end of the month and sitting down and going through all the books, I'm just going to tell you as and when I start and finish stuff and little random bits in between. I hope you don't mind. Because I did want to um, vlog the Aguerathon that I'm taking part in this month, which starts on the 4th. But I was going to stick it in the wrap up anyway, so I thought I might just well, I might as well, <laughs> getting tongue tied, just vlog the whole month and do it that way instead. So, so I've got a few things to show you from my adventures in the town that are book related. This one isn't. I wanted to try the CBD oil under the tongue. Um, it says put a few drops under the tongue, two to three times a day maximum. Uh, maximums leave 15. <laughs> Maximum is 15 drops a day. Leave the oil in the mouth for a minute before swallowing. Gradually build up the dose. Da, 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 da. It's supposed to be a miracle. My nan just had some, had a bottle, and it helped her out a bit. And she's in incredible pain all the time. So I wanted to give that a go. I mean, my mum's going to share it, but she's going to check if she can take it with the medication she's on. And then I actually got two of my books come through that I reserved at the library. So I actually have. Silence by Becca Fitzpatrick which is part of the Hush Hush series and that's come in perfect timing actually I wasn't too sure how long I had to wait because they're reading Silence for the Hush Hush read along with um, the Psycho Nix, Bookish Babbles and Chain Lee Reads I think that's her name um, so I might pick that up at some point this month as well or well, I hope to and I've got the next volume of Black Cat which is volume 16 so those are those books, they're going to be like obviously priority because, prior, I said that really weird, because they are library loans. I'm also currently reading, in case you didn't know, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, I'm nearly halfway through. So I won't be talking too much about that because that is one of the books that is from my Instagram chooses my TBR thing. And if you didn't know, Hush Hush was one of the other books. And I went to HMV because it's closing down and I've heard all the hubbub and stuff. I thought they got saved and then it, I talked to the girl and it turns out they did. So I was expecting some like proper good sales. There was no sales, these were all same price. And I was like gutted, but I wanted to get them anyway because I was on the lookout for um, one of these comics that I was after because I realized I had the fourth one in the series, <laughs> not the first. And that is the Spider-Man um, Deadpool crossover. So this isn't the first one. It is number one, but there's a zero volume before that that I'm going to try and get. I don't know if it makes a difference, really. But this is side pieces. And then I think this was either number two or number three, and it's called Isn't It Bromantic? So there's those. And also I decided to get two novels in there as well. I got George Orwell's 1984. And Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes. I've heard of this and it looked really intriguing, the cover. And I looked at the back and I realised it was a fantasy masterwork. So it's one of their classics. Um, so it says, it's the week before Halloween and Cougar and Dark's pandemonium shadow show has come to Greentown, Illinois. The siren song of the Calliope, Calliope entices all the promises of youth regained and dreams fulfilled. And as two boys trembling on the brink of manhood set out to explore the mysteries of the dark carnival smoke mazes and mirrors, they will also discover the true price of innermost wishes. Sounds fascinating. And this would be my first book from the fantasy masterwork section because I have one book from the science fiction masterworks collection. So yeah, that's my little intro for this vlog. Hope I remember to come back. <laughs> See you soon, maybe, I don't know. Also, I just had a Vego bar. Vego? Vego? They're good. Oh my god. My ways have been changed, I think. They're very nice. Yum yum. <laughs> Bye. I thought I should probably tell you some of my reading plans for this week. Um, so I'm hoping to read as much as I can of The Final Empire. Um, I am just passing the halfway mark. Um, since the last time I spoke to you. I have I started off really good actually reading like 100 pages each day and then I sort of fell a bit short because days got busier and I wasn't reading as much but I'm on page 363. So far so good. Um, I'm going to try and read as much as this today so that I can focus on my standalones for the week coming up for the A year -a which starts tomorrow. And I know I gave you like a little TBR saying all the stuff that I will choose from but I thought I'd minimise some of them so for, for example these are the things that I'm feeling like reading right now um, so I've just stuck to a small 
selection of four and if I get through these then remember for my TBR I've got quite a few other things to choose from. So the first one here is Doctor Who, the good doctor, which is following her time on this planet and she revisits it like years later I guess and things have changed for what seems to be the worst. That's like the really basic um, synopsis of it. But yeah, this is a thin one, standalone, I'm assuming. I don't think it has any... I mean, it's part of a wide series of just stories focused around Doctor Who, but I don't think any of them specifically tie on to anything. Um, if I find out that it has got another one, then I'll probably still read it, to be fair. Um, and then I've got Stephen King's Elevation, which is about this guy. It sort of seems like it's following two storylines. It's about this guy who seems to be losing weight or something at a really strange pace he's getting lighter and lighter and he's the same weight no matter what he wears and it's also following his two new neighbours who seem to be getting a lot of hell um, because they're a lesbian couple I don't really know um, so there's that one and then we've got horror store which is I think these people get trapped in like this haunted Ikea type store um, this was also another Christmas present these two here the Doctor Who one and this one was a Christmas present and so was this one as well so it's nice that I'm finally getting to them quite early on in the year and this is the castle collection um, for the Disney princesses and this is just going to be like a quick probably 30 minute read um, I might take my time just looking over the pictures but you just go into the castles of the famous princesses and read little bits about it which is it's probably for children but I enjoy things like this um, so those are my reading plans for the week and I'll update you um, as the year on goes and of course you know the regular rest of the stuff that I'm reading for the month <laughs> juice I probably shouldn't even been lying on my stomach this is gonna probably end terribly I'm so flushed blimey so today was actually the first day of the year of fun mentioned already theme is standalones and I'm coming to you later on in the evening now to just wrap up what I've read today and wrap up a book actually so my first book of March is completed I ended up finished starting and finishing today Elevation by Stephen King I really enjoyed this I gave it a four stars just briefly if you guys don't know what it's about I think it's one of his latest releases I think it came out in 2018 sometime um, so it's about this man called Scott who finds out that he's basically in this strange situation where he's losing weight but it's not affecting the way he looks and he state he is that same lost weight despite wearing heavy garments of clothing or wearing nothing he just he's going down it's really strange but as well as that there's like a side narrative which had more um of an influence than i was expecting basically this lesbian couple um move in recently and they're just finding that the small town is not as homely and welcoming as they thought and they're really struggling to get their restaurant business booming just because of the way they live their lives and that they're open about it and it's really interesting and it's kind of their interaction with Scott this strange predicament of him losing weight and it's just all tied in together really nicely so I will say knowing that it was going to focus on those aspects a bit more rather than just the losing weight thing I was happy because if I didn't know that we were going to have a lot of input from these like random neighbours I would have been like this isn't the story I went in for but I had I think I said in my written review I had watched a, a, a video review I obviously read the longer synopsis in here and it mentioned that but if I just went in blind I would have been like I thought it was just about a guy randomly losing weight. What's all this stuff going on? This is deeper than I was expecting, do you know what I mean? But because I knew I really enjoyed that and I really appreciated that. 
and I like how they discuss like small town prejudices against people of same sex marriage. Um, I like the the growing, blossoming development of friendship. Um, you know, everything around this, not just the strange losing weight issue, was just a really nice story basically. Um, that was a, kind of a weird sentence but yeah I gave it four stars I really did enjoy this um it's only my second Stephen King book I have read and I know for the OG fans that like are really here for his horror and that people are quite disappointed in this but I guess I'm maybe immune a little bit because as I say it's only the second book I've read by him and also I haven't really read any horror yet from him so I don't have that to sort of build me up to be disappointed if you know what I mean but yeah it's a nice little read um it probably took me longer than it should have done because when I say one sitting reads, I think, you know, it takes me a day. But I think when other people say one sitting reads, they they read it non-stop, um, like, straight away without taking any breaks. But I can't, I don't have that attention span. So it took me from, like, 10 to 4 o'clock to finish, <laughs> even though it's so tiny. But I'm potting around doing things. I've got stuff to do, you know what I mean? Anyway, yeah, I've rambled too much about this. I'm going to try and be quicker with my review parts. <laughs> good read completely forgot to mention that I'm also currently reading The Good Doctor by Juno Dawson I now know who Juno Dawson is I only recognised her briefly because I read another ow, another Doctor Who book before um, but she is the one that's written the gender something and she also wrote um, oh, I can't remember them now off the top of my head but I recognise some of the books that she's written. I was shocked that she'd written them. I've been, I, I just thought she was, which is a silly thing to, to think. I just thought she wrote Doctor Who fiction. I, I didn't think she had her own, well, this is her own book, but do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I didn't realise she wrote all the books that I am aware of. I didn't put two and two together and figure it out. But yeah, cool. Enjoying this so far. Um, I'm only like, what page am I on? 27 pages in but fairly decent so I probably I haven't I was planning on reading more of the final empire today but I stopped after I finished elevation and watched like a load of YouTube so I probably like alternate either alternate between this and the final empire but to be fair it's getting late now so if I do pick up anything else more to read it will most likely just be this to continue so a bit annoyed at myself that I didn't continue with final empire today but I mean to be fair I usually try to focus on readathon books during a readathon rather than dipping him to stuff that I'm currently reading I don't know but I know it, it's just a bit frustrating because I could probably if I really concentrated finish the final empire in like two more days but now it's gonna have to prolong because I'm focusing on readathon books if you know what I mean I don't know I'm trying to I don't know race against myself it seems I'll speak to you in another clip so I finished two books today, which is the second day of the year of form. So that's three books down, which I'm really happy about. So I finished A Good Doctor, a Doctor Who story by Juno Dawson. I ended up giving this one a four out of five stars. It was way more like interesting than I thought it was going to be. Like I've read um, only one sort of Doctor Who fiction book before, and that was like last year, and it was a series of five short stories um, edited all together by Juno Dawson I do believe um, and that's called The the Triple Knife and um, I don't know I just wasn't expecting it to be as entertaining so yeah it was super funny um, there was a lot of important discussions about inequality and I love how that sort of impacts both you know between races on earth as well as sort of transmitting that onto different species and their struggles on alien planets so i thought that was awesome um it was unexpectedly gripping as i already mentioned like the plot i was really invested in actually the only thing that i could sort of downplay it for was that there was so many typos in this i don't know why it had so many that's the sort of thing that although it's a really minor inconvenience it's something that irritates me when i'm reading because i just can't help but see it and the fact that it was a little bit hypocritical in a sense because for me I feel like the whole thing was about you know racism, speciesism, that was like a main theme in this whole thing but I found that, hopefully I can explain it a little bit better in this like speaking it, I found that when some of the characters were referred to 
instead of using their name specifically of the Loba characters, they'd say the Loba turn. And I was like, well, you're not going to say the human turn, and it never did in this book. So why are you saying that? Or just give them their name. We already know they're of the, the Loba species. You don't need to clarify it like that. I don't know. I just feel like that sounded a little bit hypocritical in the fact that, you know, they were trying to eradicate the species speciesism divide, and then there was just that sort of way of writing I don't know maybe that was just an overshadow maybe I'm looking too much into it but I thought I'd mention that other than that really did enjoy this actually and then I not too long finished this cute little book this is the castle collection um, I found out it does have an author obviously but I found out what the name was it's by um, Nicola Deschamps and I gave this a three stars in the end it's just super cute really visually stimulating child friendly obviously really easy to read you know nice vibrant pictures minimal text the only downfall um the only downfall of course is that it's not you know catered to adults obviously um is very simplistic in its style it's just a cute little collection piece um is a bit repetitive at times but it's just nice if you're a disney princess fan like me that you probably wouldn't know if you looked around my room i don't really have many princess stuff around but it's adorable a nice little collective piece to have in the house gosh it was so hot in all the shops today like i've just got in from town and i'm sweating i had to take my jumper off i don't know what it was it's like they had their heat in like proper turned up i went to the library and i was sweltering i had to take my jumper off even the lady was like oh my god it's so hot in here i was like yeah i'm boiling but it wasn't just the library like i, I cut through primark well i didn't just cut through but i went through primark and someone was coming down the escalator and they were like yeah it's hotter down here than it is in the upstairs part and then i went to wh smith boiling in there but outside it was like nice it was windy like there's it's a hint of a thunderstorm or something maybe that no that wouldn't be the reason why it's hot inside anyway i'm i'm rambling also very likely you will probably see me in this top again tomorrow if i vlog a bit because i'm volunteering tomorrow and the top's gonna get dirty anyway so i mean i might as well just chuck on another one that i've already worn do you know what i mean so <laughs> Yeah, so the plan for today was just to chill in the library and get some reading done. I finished a book, but it isn't, that reminds me, I need to write it down in my little reading progress book. So yeah, I finished a book, but it isn't anything to do with the Ayerathon that's going on this week. Um, I finished Black Cat Volume 16 by Kentaro Yubuki, and I really, really enjoyed that one. This is like one of the rare occasions, I think I was talking about, oh, I've gone out of focus. I think I was talking about reading in one sitting earlier in this vlog but this one of the rare occasions where I've actually done that and I was struggling because I needed to go to the toilet and I was like no I'm not going to leave until I finish it <laughs> um so yeah I finished it I gave it a four stars it was really fast paced um I was like turning the pages so quickly really devouring it um there were some really bloody scenes actually <laughs> but yeah the series is drawing to a close so I think the climax is like proper building up and getting intense which I'm loving um and then I went to the toilet and I wanted to get a few books but before I get on to that actually today I discovered I didn't even realize this because I don't keep up with these informations but Witchathon round three is happening on the 13th to the 20th of this month so I've decided or I, went, I want to go back into the library after my toilet adventures um, because I want to see if I can find any books for the challenges of that and I didn't in the end um, I don't think I don't know now um, <laughs> but some of the books that I did buy today I'm hoping will fit some of those so I'm going to hastily put a TBR up but I'll let you know that nearer the time I think and that gives me time to properly crunch down on that it's difficult because I can't really think too much about it now because I'm currently doing a readathon so it's like I get too overwhelmed but then it's pretty much like three days after the Ayerathon finishes so I mean that should be enough time I think for me to bring up a plan I don't know but yeah so I actually really wanted to get the World Book Day books because Rick Riordan, Riordan, one of my favourite authors, I still don't know how to pronounce his surname, I'm so sorry, he um, had a special Trial of Olymp uh, wait, no, Trial of Apollo book coming out and I was like, I'm clocking that because I'm planning to do like a readathon in my own self thing, like a, I don't know, just a marathon readathon thing. Is that what? Reading marathon? Readathon? Wow. 
mind blown so much so that the camera keeps defocusing defocusing is that a word word i don't know anyway i really want to get his book and so they're only a pound um books anyway so i decided to get four that i was interested in i think there's like six or eight but some of them are like really kiddified that i wouldn't read um so this is percy jackson and the singer of apollo yes it's another collaboration because he's got two other i think um little novella stories like this where they've crossed over he's got one with the um he's got two i think with the kane chronicles and the percy jackson series so after i read that i'll get to this so it won't be something i read very very soon but yes and then i picked up two more of those um world book day books there i really should ask my grandparents to look for the tokens because they used to do that for me all the time i would have got so many free um but yeah then i've got Nought forever or not forever by mallory blackman oh it's a noughts and crosses story the funny thing is i was looking as i was searching for where they stored these um world book day books i glanced at um the noughts and crosses and i was like oh i don't know i'm really i'm kind of intrigued i don't know it's one of those books that everyone was reading back in the day um so maybe i'll have to read those before i get to this one but this sounded interesting i daren't read it again now on the back just in case it spoils something and i won't tell you the synopsis is for the others either because i don't know if they're part of something i'm not sure they usually are <laughs> i don't know why i didn't think this um but i've got ever dark by abby abby elephiston that's an interesting surname and snapped by patrice lawrence there we go and then also back in the library again i just borrowed another one of the black cat books this is volume 17 now and i also because i had their library sale still going on i also picked up for 20 pence me earl and the dying girl which is something that i think i was interested in reading back when it was released but i just i never got to it in the end it's not something i don't know i think it might have come out when i was reading like rainbow row and all of those books so i was sort of into contemporary but maybe not enough to sort of stray from the authors i was familiar with um, and i don't think i've seen the film either so that's that oh i also got i don't know why i picked this up because i've not even started any of this series but i also got cassandra clare and wesley choose the eldest curses book one sneak peek for the red scrolls of magic which is another uh, shadow hunter series i didn't know i didn't even know another one was coming out to be fair i don't really know i'm not a track of it but i yeah i don't know why i have this because the lady even said yeah it's spoilers for the new book and i was like but i have read none of them <laughs> and i also want to show you oh well i got a pot of sweets because i was like i needed a sugar rush because i was feeling like i was waning but in Primark I also got these really pretty um, mum jeans. I hope they like really fit because I'm so uncomfortably close to the camera. I'm so sorry. I hope they fit because since Primark changed their sizings, I don't know where I am anymore. It's just really off. I'm getting sizes that are bigger than I would usually be. But I've also put on a little bit of weight recently as well. So I know I'm a bit bigger, but not, I don't know. Anyway, this is them. They're so cute. They're like this pastel baby pink um mum jeans they're rolled up at the bottom like cuffed and i saw this really cute top it was like there was quite a few cute like spring you know pastel colored um clothing items and there was um a top that i liked it was cropped i think it was purple like a dusty purple and it said be creative and i thought it was really cute but they didn't have a size that i thought would fit me um so yeah i haven't read any um a year of fun read fun reads yet um i'm probably not going to maybe today um I think I'm just going to focus on the final empire now because I feel like I'm so close to the finish and I just don't want to drag it out too too long so yeah um, it's just going to be a chilled reading day to day nothing to do with readathons or anything like that but yeah <laughs> see you in a bit you know it wouldn't be a vlog of mine if I didn't include some sort of face mask um, so this is actually one by Face Inc um, a part of Now's Inc London this is the Fairy Tale of Good Skin printed sheet mask gift set I actually got this like a year or two ago um i think from chloe for a christmas or something and i don't know i just it's so cute i just didn't want to tamper with it um but it says write your own happy ever after with our tantalas i mean that that's perfect because you know it's a reading vlog happy ever after print i don't know 
tails, I don't know. Um, with our tantalising trio of face masks, set to get your skin party season ready. Banish those bags with the energising brighten up sheet mask. Prep for the work shindig with our illuminating sparkle like a unicorn sheet mask. And make that next day hangover a thing of the past of our oh dear, help this hangover sheet mask. So, it's really adorable. I don't know if these are still available to be fair. Um, but my skin's already like washed and toned. So it comes like this. And then it's like opens up like a little book. How precious is that? Um, and it says here, <laughs> it says, in the land of happiness, there lives a unicorn who beamed illuminating highlights onto everyone it met. One day, a brighten up rainbow took over the land of happiness and they all had a crazy party. The next day, oh dear, helped the hangovers with its mocktail mix of nine herbal extracts to make them all hydrated and looking radiant. People ask why everyone in the land of happiness looks so great. The secret? They live by the life motto, have fun in the skin you're in. That's absolutely adorable. So let's use this one then. This is Sparkle Like a Unicorn Illuminating Sheet Mask. And it says not only will this mask transform you into the cutest thing on the planet, but it will work to give you glowing skin, enriched with vitamin B3, B5, mulberry, green tea and lemon fruit extract to lift dead skin cells, work to tighten in large pores and help to improve the appearance of fine lines. Oh, I think this would actually be very good for me because my pores have been very obvious for me of late and I don't know why it just says apply to uh, clean dry skin remove the mask from the sachet gently unfold carefully place the mask over your face ensure an even contact to the skin after 15 minutes remove the mask and gently massage excess liquid into the skin no need to rinse off so let's do just that all right it's so pretty it's so cute I'm like balancing my camera on top of my bookshelf. I really hope I don't get any of this juice anywhere. I'm so happy it's still so wet. Like I honestly thought these were going to be dried out. I don't know why I leave masks for so long. Like, I, can, I accumulate them for ages and then I don't know. It's like I hoard them. It's really strange. If you guys have seen me do like sheet mask reviews and stuff before, specifically in reading vlogs and just vlogs in general, you know that I keep the little... um container so that I use the juice like throughout the week until it finishes that's my moisturizer right oh my god I've never before used one that actually has a design on it like this mm, it's so cold <laughs> this is horrifying this is so scary oh my god it's really thick like the actual mask and it's like the wrong shape for my face did you see it's kind of oval so it's like a little bit awkward <laughs> this is absolutely horrifying I'm so sorry I'm probably giving you nightmares but we all have to face our demons don't we <laughs> right I'm just gonna keep this on for however long I feel like I'm reading the final empire at the moment so yeah I'm sure this will do what most sheet masks do and just moisturize my skin give it a little bit of a pep in its step you know how it is but I'll let you know if there's any like major feelings that differ to what I've just said <laughs> quick update before I sign off for the night that skincare mask thing wow just wow that face mask kind of made my skin like feel a bit itchy whilst I had it on which was strange I don't know if it's the tightening of pores effect but I, I'm sure that wouldn't have worked that quickly anyway um it wasn't like irritating or anything it was just like a weird sensation it's made my skin feel nice in any shine that you see is from the oil that I put on afterwards but the actual serum from the mask really sunk in I sort of just smeared it around and put it on my neck and that and it sunk in really quickly so yeah it felt hydrated it didn't feel drying but I'm trying out some new skin products anyway so I just continued on with that routine and so far so good I hope I don't have a reaction as usual if anything happens I will put it in the description so uh, yeah adios amigos <laughs> do you pronounce yes or is that amigos as in like plural of friends is it just amigo I need to start my languages again it seems I really do so I finally finished the final empire. I've just got the little um, description at the back for what words mean or whatever it's called, glossary. I didn't even know that was in there. But uh, I just, 
I'm gonna do something that I never do and it's really it's quite late now I think it's like past 12 and I just uh, I can't stay up any longer my mind's all fuddled so I'm just gonna write review to come I never write that on on Goodreads I sit down and I write my reviews like straight away but I just there's just so much and I want to do it justice you know <laughs> So hopefully I'll wrap my review tomorrow. I'm not going to talk too much about this anyway just because um, it's going to be in a separate video that I'm doing. And yeah, five star read for sure. This was amazing. Worth every second of the read. I proper dragged out the last like 50 pages over like two days I feel like. But I just don't want it to end. I do that oftentimes with books. Like I get near the end and I'm like... I'm gonna put that down for a bit and then I just avoid it and then I'm thinking hmm I don't really have to go back to it just because I don't want it to end but like come on I need to know what happens and it honestly feels like it could be a standalone to be fair like everything happened I just I don't know what to expect for the next books but this was amazing definitely read it if you haven't already so just kind of come and quickly say that I'm gonna clock out of the year from early um it's still Friday evening or I guess Saturday morning depending on how you look at it um, and I just know that I'm not going to get another standalone book read between now and then because tomorrow Saturday I am out in Stratford all day and then Sunday I think I'm going out for a meal with my boyfriend and his family I think so I just don't think I'm going to get enough reading done so I'm probably most likely just going to start one of my library loans and try and finish that off because that's a read along that's taking place this month as well and that's going to be most likely Silence which is the third book in the Hush Hush series um, but yeah I mean that's just the plan at the moment and then hopefully I can finish that before the 13th which is the Witcherthon which is starting so yeah I've still got to tell you which books I've got for that but hopefully I remember later on down the road <laughs> So I've probably been home for about an hour now but as I mentioned briefly before I was in Westfield in Stratford today and I had such a lovely time. There was a moment where I was eating and I got all panicky and hot. I, this happens especially when I'm out at a restaurant so I had to like take myself to the toilet, calm down and I don't know it was just really um, funny. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it was such a nice time. Um, I will show you what I got. I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm proud of myself. I didn't go too crazy. I just picked up things that I was on the lookout for. And um, yeah, I will show you the stuff I got. They're not all book related, so you feel free to skip this part if you want. <laughs> Shall start with the books. So I just got one book and I had actually was hoping there was a Waterstones up there because I couldn't remember if there was or not, but there was a Foils. Um, and I just picked up one, as I said. And it is one of the signed first editions of Black Leopard Red Wolf by Marlon James. And I'm so, so excited because I don't really have many signed editions of anything. I don't think I own any first editions until now. And I don't know, I've just heard so much about this. And I remember now, I don't know if I said it on a vlog or something, but I recognised the name and I was like, what is that name? I recognise it. And then recently when I was doing my shelves over there, I saw that I had this book, which is A Brief History of Seven Killings. So hopefully I'll get to that before I read this just to compare because I think that's non-fiction I think that's about uh, the killings of Bob Marley I don't I might be wrong I can't remember but yeah so I got this it's absolutely stunning I actually don't know too, too much about it is it about Africa yeah if African history and mythology really hope I enjoy this they seem to be bringing out more of these sort of things of late because obviously we've got um, the children of blood and bone maybe I'll read that before this and do like a comparison um, but yeah I'm so excited i really i'm happy to have got this actually used i had like one pound 18 or something on my card so i used that to get it off and i think it put it down to 18 pound something uh yeah so i mean yep yeah, saving somewhere <laughs> so i also went into the morphe store which i was so excited i forgot that they opened recently but before i show you what i got in there which isn't too too much i popped into kiko never say Kiko Milano but it's Kiko Milano <laughs> and I got another one of my smart drops charge 
um, because when I went to recently purchase it apparently the shop was closed down in the other place that I went to go so I got this one last time I used the kiwi extract one um, this one is different it's the energizing booster um, so yeah I'll try that out but it's, it's the same thing but a different version of the product so hopefully my skin reacts well to that and this is the smart hydra cream shock cream so instead of the um, stick which is what I got before I thought I'd just get the cream and hopefully it will last longer um, if I can open it I'll show you and yeah so I'll use this as my replacement moisturizer I've used the stick version I don't think they're too dissimilar just the fact that one's more runny and in a tube like this so my skin should be all right with this I've just got to figure out because I'm doing a sort of different skincare routine at the moment but I've, my skin is used to that now it's the revolution products I've got a video coming out on that soon I think um, so I just got to see if I can use them in conjunction or just have to wait until that finishes to then go back to this I don't know <laughs> And then in Morphe, I decided to pick up one of the continuous setting mists. I really hope it's not too, too sticky. Um, but this just looks amazing. Like, everyone that uses it, it's just like, shh. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> And I got a Jeffree Star lip scrub, which I've never tried before. This is the flavour Rainbow Sherbet. Woohoo. And then lastly, I got two things in Lush. One of them is my mum's and one of them is for me. So I picked up the cream egg pink and blue and yellow one, which is a bubble bar. It smelled amazing. It smelled like spearmint or something. And then for Mother's Day for my mum, I have got her a soap that she wanted, which is the Outback Mate soap. Um, oh, it's come undone a little bit, but this smells really good as well. I think it's kind of minty too. Yeah, eucalyptus. So yeah, that's the stuff. That I got today and what I was up to today and I'll update you in terms of reading sometime soon I'm probably going to start silence either tonight or tomorrow at some point so yeah give you my TBR for the Witcherthon. Uh, some of these books I forgot that I selected but let me just get my little list of the books. So for the genre not normally read I have got Snap. I don't actually know. Oops bookmarks came out and I forgot to show you guys this when I showed you my um, little uh, world book day haul. But anyway, I don't know really what genre this is. I'm guessing it's contemporary of some sort. I don't typically pick up contemporary books, so this is definitely one of those. I will say, unless these are directly linked to past stories authors have written, I do like these small little World Book Day books for bringing me on to another author and perhaps checking out their other full-length books. Um, so hopefully that will be the case for this one. It also says from the award-winning author of Orange Boy, but I don't think this is connected I think it's just its own um, thing so yeah there's that the next one is a book with flowers on the cover and for that I've chosen my other world book day book and that is Everdark by Abby Elfner Stone I forgot to tell you guys what this is about so um, Snap is about Soria Soraya's younger brother um, Farhad runs off into the freezing night. Soraya and her friend Austin are in a race against time to find him. High above the streets, Farhad's guilt closes in. He doesn't want to be found. A story of two friends, one missing boy, and a secret as precious as gold. And then Everdark is about... Um, it's midnight, crackle down, everybody is waiting in the phoenix for the phoenix to rise up from the forest of Everdark and renew the magic of the unmapped kingdoms. Oh, I'm guessing it's some sort of fantasy. But there is no sign of the phoenix tonight. Something else emerges from Everdark instead. A harpy bent on stealing the unmapped magic for itself. And so it is up to 11-year-old girls called Smudge and an eccentric monkey called Bartholomew to set sail behind the, beyond the legendary North Swell and stop the harpy before it's too late. So grab your compass and roll down your sail. The first adventure in the unmapped chronicles is about to begin. Oh, this is the first adventure and it's such a small book. Oh, how exciting. Um, so I did obviously read the synopsis 
this is when I picked them up but I didn't read them in depth like that I probably read like the first section here and I thought okay that sounds interesting <laughs> And then the next one is a romance book and I actually forgot that I chose this because I've been reading it like for the past couple of days and honestly I'm finding it difficult to pick up today. Um, so that probably means I should DNF it but I probably won't because as I mentioned in my Goodreads update I like to talk to myself. So yeah this is Silence, it's the third book in the Hush Hush series. Um, it's also the month of reading Silence for the Hush Hush read along hosted by I think it's Chandler reads oh, I always say her name wrong I can't remember sorry I'm not familiar with her channel but um, it's also hosted by ba uh, Bookish Babbles which I watch and Psycho Nix who I also watch um, but yeah so this month is Silence fits in for the romance book otherwise I wouldn't have had a selection for it it's like paranormal, paranormal romance featuring Fallen Angels which I've spoken to you guys a bit about already for the past couple of months so I won't say too much more here but yeah there is a total of four books I believe and this is the third one then the next one is set in a warm climate and for that I'm um, climate why did I say it like that climate for that I'm choosing Gina from Siberia it's a I think it's an, if a, an just an illustrated book but I'm pretty sure it's like a graphic novel of some sort I really hope it works on my kindle because I haven't checked it for a while but I'm pretty sure I opened it up once and I could see everything because I have issues sometimes viewing picture formats on my kindle um, but that is Gina from Siberia, I can't remember the author, um, it's one of my net galley reads and she moves from Siberia to the USA, USA is far hotter <laughs> than Siberia, or specifically parts of the USA, I'm not sure exactly where they moved to, but I thought, you know, that would be a good quick decision, I've been wanting to read that this month anyway and that fits here, so yes. Then we've got Action Packed Book and for that I've chosen Black Cat and I'm on to Volume 17 by Kentaro Yabuki. I've almost finished this series so I'm holding on for that. The only thing is with these two books, that one and Silence are library books and they're due back on the day that The Witcher Fun starts which is the 13th but I requested these in so I don't know if I'm actually allowed to renew them so I will find out. Um, and yeah I, that means I have to drag out silence a bit longer which is annoying because I was hoping to just kind of read that and get rid of it but yeah and the group read is when the moon was ours I've never heard of that before I don't think and I probably won't get to it but that is my TBR for the witchathon so the next time you see me will most likely be tomorrow when that starts and I'll do what I did the year of one most likely and just come to you at the end of the day um, when I finished reading books and stuff and let you know my thoughts on that so I've literally just finished Silence by Becca Fitzpatrick, um, you know it's the third book in the Hush Hush sequence or whatever it's called and it's funny because it actually expired today as I mentioned, I went and renewed it um, because for some reason the online renewal thing just it wasn't working um, so I did that and I ended up getting some more books from the library that I'll show you in a bit but yeah uh, literally I didn't get to finish it before dinner so I literally scoffed my food, ran back upstairs, finished it and I don't know I think I'm gonna give it like a 2 or 2.5 stars it's just it's strangely got this addictive like even on the front it says addictive and brilliantly written will take your breath away it does have like addictive feelings but it's not I'm just kind of reading it to see what happens I have like this mild curiosity but yeah it's still not the best thing I've ever read <laughs> Um, so yeah those are my thoughts there and then as for the other books that I picked up from the library I just decided to look around the nature um, animal section and like science um, what else I look through and like myth books but um, I picked up these in the end so I've got the Zen Reader edited by Thomas Cleary um, which is about Zen <laughs> it's talking about the I don't actually know I don't didn't read properly actually I just thought it looked interesting founded by Bodhidharma centuries ago in China Zen and its teachings have since spread widely exerting a tremendous cultural influence not only across Asia but also the modern West to this day Zen inspires young and old from all walks of life to see the world with fresh eyes beyond our, new, our usual assumptions and prejudices and then it's got a little bit more in there and then I also picked up Legends of the Stars these are books I've never heard of before and um, by Patrick Moore looks like so and I'll briefly read you a little bit about that have you ever wondered how the constellations got their names or want to know the stories of the gods and heroes immortalized in the night sky this was the closest I can find to myth mythology I like things like this astronomy you know stars and everything and their connections to Greek and Roman gods and stuff like that so this 
caught my interest. Um, in Legends of the Sky, Patrick Moore, Britain's best loved astronomer and presenter of the sky at night for over 50 years, retells some of the stories behind these um, star groups and explains how to look for them in the heavens. From one great hunter, Orion, to his nemesis, the scorpion, and from Pegasus, the flying horse, to Jason's ship, the Argo, he guides the reader through the celestial picture book, bringing the lie of some of the greatest tales ever told. In an age when the ancient myths are seldom taught in schools, this is an ideal book for anyone who has ever gazed at the stars and asked themselves how the names of the constellations came about. And then the last book I picked up is one I didn't actually know it was a book. I've been wanting to see the film for ages, so maybe I can do a was the book or film better. But this is going to be a really, hopefully, interesting, eye-opening read. And that is Black Klansman, um, Race, Hate and the Undercover Investigation of a Lifetime by, is it, is, does SGT mean Sergeant? Yes. Sergeant Ron Stallworth or Stallworth? Stallworth? Um, and yeah, I, I was surprised to see this. Um, I was just literally looking through those sections and I saw this and I was like, I recognised the title, obviously unaware that it was a book. But yeah, it says, all of this began in October 1978 as an intelligence unit detective for the Colorado Springs Police Department, the first black detective in the history of the department department might I add. One of my duties was to scan the two daily newspapers for any reports of information concerning any hint of subversive activity that might have an impact in the welfare and safety of Colorado Springs. It's surprising what some people will put in the paper, obvious money schemes, prostitution, that sort of thing mostly. But every once in a while there's something that really stands out. As I looked over the classified ads, one particular um, caught my eye. It read, Ku Klux Klan for information contact and then it's got like the PO box and everything. Now there was something unusual so I answered the ad. This sounds like it's going to be amazing. Um, it's a true story, yeah. The incredible true story of um, a black detective at the centre of an undercover investigation to infiltrate the KKK. But I, I feel like if it takes the tone of the film, because I feel like the film's quite from the trailers that I've seen is quite humorous if it has that tone it'll be a more I guess pleasurable read obviously it's got important things and it's based on a true story but it'll be nice if it had like I don't know that sort of tone that makes it easy to read if that makes sense and um, but yeah those are just the other random picks of library books that I picked up my thoughts on silence and yeah it's also the first day of the witchathon today so that is my first book completed for that which was for the challenge of let me get my little book um, a romance book so yeah that would fill that criteria fairly well I'll speak to you in another clip soon so I finished two books today which I'm happy with because I was actually out volunteering today so I, I didn't think I was going to get much read they were very short things but still look at me in the in the mirror background over there um, I read Gina from Siberia which I gave a four stars that was really cute it was about um, from the it was like I think a family moving from Russia to the USA in hopes of a better life um, I'm trying to avoid the fact that I've got food all over my top um, and it's told from the perspective of their terrier dog and it's so sweet I just I would have wished it was a little bit longer um, it just it was over in like 10 minutes but it was a really sweet story I did enjoy it and so yeah that got four stars and then I've literally just finished Black Cat volume 17 gave this a four stars as well you can definitely feel that there's a build up now um, somebody said that in a Goodreads review that it felt definitely like a filler um, I mean a lot of them are filler it's building up in my opinion but it didn't feel like a bad filler or anything like I feel like it wasn't pointless I did enjoy it um, but I am ready for that ultimate climax now so yeah not long to go at all so yeah that was four stars as well so that is the end of witcherfon at day two and so far in terms of the month's reading i've read so much i'm really happy i know a lot of them were shorter books but i'm happy that i managed to finish that big final empire book so that's just making me happy for the long ride um but yeah i'll catch you soon Hi guys, so I'm here at the most awkwardest like position ever. I'm literally kneeling on my floor in front of my mirror, but a bit different, isn't it? So I have actually just come back in because where do I where do I even look? Camera? You? I don't know. I'll do a bit of both. I just came back in. I was out with my friend Maria, um, and we were watching um, Captain Marvel. Oh my god, I was oh, speechless. That film was phenomenal. Like it was even better than I was expecting it to be. Like. My cheeks were tingling, everyone was like whooping and clapping and at first I thought oh god it's filled with a load of kids um, because it's a Saturday 
and they were being really loud and just irritating but then it was kind of like a communicative communicative i don't know if that's the right word just a cohesive enjoyment everyone was laughing everyone oh it was so good anyway that's besides the point i just wanted to update you on some reading so i read this in two halves actually which i didn't really need to but it took me a little while to get into to be fair and i was out whilst i was reading too so it wasn't as i don't know i didn't i wasn't my mind wasn't completely on it but that is snap by patrice lawrence i ended up giving this a three out of five stars it's a really nice showcase because i rarely read or i rarely the books i gravitate to it's very rare that i see a black main character or like someone of a different religion or whatever and the fact that this featured black people brown people the muslim faith um i thought that was phenomenal so i liked that i just feel like i'm kicking myself a bit because i didn't get to connect to it as much as i would have liked to but nevertheless it was a, a nice uh, read i think i would like to try some more from this author um so there's that I also, well, I say started, but I haven't really started. Basically, I took this with me because I was hoping to read it on the train back because my mum was kind enough to drop me to Maria's and then I got the train back. But um, this is Everdark by Abby Elphinstone. And I actually, I was going to say, I actually faffed too much to begin this. By the time I finished faffing, it was time to get off at my stop, but hey-ho. So this will be my read for this evening and also till when I finish it. It's actually got tinier font, so it might take me a little while longer. Um, by the way, Snap was the read for the Witcher font theme, not theme, um, prompt for something out of your genre or something like that, um, because I don't tend to read like contemporary generally and then also i want to show you a little bit of a book haul so i got another world book day they had in the in the wh smith up in um where we went they had some of the older releases as well and this was one that i believe i wanted to get but missed before and i think this was from last year they had some from 2015 as well um so this is follow the dark dark path into the dark dark woods the dark dark bridge by the dark dark water linger let the ghosts of heaven tell their story and this is killing the dead by marcus sedgwick Sedgwick so hopefully I enjoy this one because I'm pretty sure I was interested in trying it last year and I just I don't know I didn't get to it didn't see it I'm pretty sure I don't have it and then in Waterstones I'm really happy because I decided this time to spend my points my card um I don't know I always like I just always try to mount it up forever but there was two things that I was I had in my mind and I thought I'm not going to pay the full amount for this because it's a big one and I finally got around to get in the Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon and she is a thick girl she is super thick it had three pounds off anyway but I thought I'm not gonna pay what is it like 15 16 quid let me check that it is 16.99 so yeah I decided to just spend my points on it which was really nice I've still got like seven pounds something left on my card as well so that was good and also I've got Saga volume four because I recently picked up five because that was the only one I could see but I've read up to three so far so this is the next one um I hopefully will start this soon I think it's on one of my reading challenges as well that I'm doing throughout the year so yeah so far so good happy with my purchases happy with my reading so far and even happier with captain marvel let me know if you guys have seen it and what you thought i thought it was fantastic all right i'll catch you on the flip side <laughs> i'll catch you later <laughs> i've just finished reading <laughs> ever dark by abby elphinstone and i really liked it i gave it a four out of five stars um it feels like a different quality to some of the other world book day books i've read before like it felt more complex and i was wondering how on earth was it going to set up the start of a new series in such a tiny book but it did it it exceeded my expectations i really did enjoy it um i liked that we had like a sentient a boat we had a talking monkey and this main character who whose whole message was basically self-belief um hoping trusting in your instinct and yourself even if you don't have the best grades or book smart basically which i think is a really nice message for young people specifically um, and to see that taking the lead in this to become a new series i suppose um was just awesome so yeah i'm gonna write down my progress and stuff in my reading journal and then i'm gonna go to bed but first let me tell you what 
that ticked off in terms of my Witcherfon progress. Okay, so that meant that I read book with cover, book with flowers on the cover, um, and also I did have Ever Dark Down for pick a nice spot outside to read, but the weather's been really bad, so I just I've read the book, but I haven't read it outside, and I'm actually going to end my um, Witcherfon participation here because. I've read all the books that I was going to read, I'm not going to read the group one, but I realised I didn't see like the full um, information, shall I say I guess, of the Witcher font. I went onto the Twitter account today and I saw the full like prompts and I will tell you what those are, I swear I screenshotted it, oh here it is. So this Witcher font, um was celebrating what is it called where's it gone Ostara I believe um, it's one of the most important parts of the year for witches it says um, so the first one is Ostara is a time for rebirth and new life pick a book in a genre you don't normally read so for that I read Silence by Becca Fitzpatrick which was like a romance romance paranormal um, then the next one was Flowers are a symbol of spring. Read a book that has flowers on it. I read Everdark by Abby Elphinstone. Then there was three. Ostara brings a begins to bring in a season of fertility. Choose a romance book. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. Um, the romance book was Silent. <laughs> the genre not normally read was Snap that I read um, by Patrice Lawrence. Four. Warm weather is coming back around. Choose a book that is set in a warm climate. For that, I chose Gina from Siberia. I can't remember the author's name, sorry. Um, five, the weather is getting friendlier. Pick a nice spot outside and read there. I would have read Everdark outside, but I kind of forgot. And as I already mentioned, it's been horrible in the UK um, lately. It's not been nice at all. Number six is Nature's Energy is Picking Up. Pick an action-packed book. For that, I read Black Cat, Volume 17 by Akantara Yabuki. And number seven was Read Our Group Pick for this round, When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie, which I didn't read. So, yeah, that's me signing off in terms of the witcher -thon. Um I'm hoping to do a separate reading vlog this weekend. I don't know how that's going to turn out, though, because I think I'm staying around my boyfriends and... I don't want to be reading for the whole weekend if I'm there, just, I don't want to be rude. Um, but yeah, I did warn him that I am doing a reading vlog most likely, so as long as he doesn't mind me reading, I probably won't film around there, but as long as he doesn't mind me reading, then cool. Um, yeah, so I think it's going to be chilled. I might just pick up some library books now, um, because I took out three more, didn't I? And... I've got another, I really wanted to get to Melmoth this month and also obviously I wanted to get to the last book in the Winter Night Trilogy and the new Christopher Pellini book but I don't know if I'm going to get around to it this month now. We will see. We will see. Um, yeah. Night. <laughs> so I've come to realise over the past couple of books I've been in a bit of like a dazed fog which I totally blame Silence for. So I'm hoping my next read will help kind of burst that fog a little bit and kind of get me more focused and that is the zen reader edited by thomas clary i'm liking this so far there's this thing it keeps talking about the way and and i feel terrible because in my head all i can think is do you know the way <laughs> i don't know um anyway that meme you know yeah um yeah i like that it is printed on what did it say it's a kind of paper what did they say acid free paper they try to use as much like recycled stuff as possible which is awesome but yeah i'm hoping this is an insightful read i'm sure i'll update you once i finish it or as i go on or something this is one of the library books i picked up earlier in last week yeah last week so i went to another library near me to hand in my black cat manga and they had a book sale there as well so i got four books oh my god they're heavy they're so heavy um, so the first one I saw is what made me run back to the car to get my purse. Mr. Monday by Garth Nix. I haven't read any of this, I don't even know what it's called, this series by Garth Nix. But he's one of my favourite authors. So I saw it and I thought, oh, I want to get this. They didn't have any of his other ones on the stalls. So I'll see if I can find those for cheap. And then I got three books in, what's the series called? The Saga of the Seven Sons. That makes me think perhaps there's seven 
main works um so i actually got from book two onwards so book two is a forest of stars um they're all by kevin j anderson and they just, they look really cool they're massive don't know when i'd ever get to them but i mean just for a donation price i couldn't say no the next one is horizon of horizon storms and then the last one i saw and picked up is scattered suns and so i've just looked it up and the first book well it's like the point book before i guess it's like the prequel or something it's called vowed alliances and it looks like that and it says i think it's all the sci-fi like science fiction and um, the human race begins its expansion into outer space only to discover that for centuries a multitude of other planets have been interacting on a cosmic scale i hope i like it so i'll put that as want to read and then i'll go back and the number what well, like the main first book is called hidden empire um and this one says oops i'm wondering if i can go back to the prequel if like after i read in a few books i'm not sure it says in the far future ilderians give earth the star drive. Two archaeologists glean forbidden knowledge from the ruins of a dead world. Robot servants of ruling intersectoid Clickus guard the Clickus torch, which has the power to create suns. The reasons for the fall of the Clickus empire may return. Um, oh, Felicia, I can never say her name. Felicia Day has rated it five stars. I don't read like intense science fiction like this as well, so it will be interesting to see if I like it and if I can get into such a big book like they're massive how many pages they're nearly they look bigger than 700 but they're just over 700 pages like 730 or so um so yeah that's exciting i'm still reading my zen reader book and everything's going great totally forgot to mention literally just turn off my light and i'm in bed but i finished zen reader um edited by thomas clary and I just wanted to quickly come on here and give you my quick thoughts just because tomorrow I'm hoping my mum will drop it at the library for me and I feel like I'll forget to mention it. But yeah, um, it's very insightful. It read like, you know, proverbs and stuff. I feel like I would have got more out of it maybe if I had done research a bit more beforehand because I knew the ins and outs of, not the ins and outs, but the uh, basically a brief overlay of like Buddhism and Zen and stuff like that. But I think I would have done better if I knew quite some more of the terminology because I kept looking it up but it was still a learning experience and I think it would probably read better if you read a couple in the morning or of an evening daily I feel like you'd get more out of it that way rather than what I do which is reading from cover to cover but just a few things I thought I'd mention I gave it a three stars so that's going back to the library shortly <laughs> So super random but um, I was supposed to go and volunteer in today but my mum she wasn't well so I thought I can't leave her on her own because we have like the food shop and delivery and we had the Virgin Media people coming in to upgrade our boxes and basic that was supposed to be yesterday but it got it written down wrong so they did it for today and I knew because my box is awkward I have it threaded through my desk so it needed another person there um, so I'm glad I was in basically and the guy's just left he's been here for about an hour and a half he was so lovely and um, he had the most beautifulest accent i think he was spanish and um he sorted out everything so i'm gonna move everything back under my desk this is all the stuff that was on under my desk that i moved to the floor to the bed my tv i'm part of the v gang the virgin media recording gang and I'm just going to sort everything back up. I've got the music channel on and I thought I might as well record it and do a bit of like a time lapse or something for you guys for the reading vlog. I don't know. don't know why not. So, um, yeah. But before I start, look at my little new remote. It's so small. That was my actual TV one. And then this was my previous Virgin Media one. I had apparently one of the really old boxes, so... There's that. <laughs> here now nice and neat i've pushed things further back i've actually moved my record player 
underneath, it used to be here. The rest of the stuff belongs on the table. Um, I'm just gonna put things in new places now, I think, as well. And yeah. <laughs> It's been such an unexpectedly productive day at home today. Like obviously I got up early expecting to go in to my volunteering place. And so I was just ready for the day. Um, and obviously having to stay home and look after mum and that and make sure she's all right. I just felt so in the mood to do like tidying up. I hoovered the whole house. Like it's not even anything a big deal like this is stuff you should be doing anyway. But I just felt like going through bits that needed to get thrown out. Obviously I had all my stuff on my bed ready for the virgin media people to come so as i was putting those back i was getting rid of stuff just packaging that i don't need to keep hold of downstairs i um cleaned out this like cabinet thing that we've had for years but we don't really use threw that out um well actually i put it outside the house to call the council to come collect it um then the newer bookshelf that I recently got, I've just been <laughs> thinking of ideas of where to place it. It's just in the living room. I wanted it flat back against something because we kind of have to walk around it at the moment. I didn't want anyone to trip up by anyone. I meant me because I'm accident prone. So it's just facing like the patio doors in the living room. It, it won't stay there for long, I don't think, but it's just given me an idea to fill it up with books and that now. All underneath has been put back. Slightly different order. To me, it looks neater. To me it looks like I've got more space. Um, so yeah, right now I've done all of those bits and bobs. I'm now going to um, go on to Virgin, look up my shows, set my series links. And yeah, buzzing. Very productive day, I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> so I've just changed my bed. I actually was intending, because obviously I put all my stuff on my bed and it was all dusty for when I was getting my TV box sorted out. Um, so I've just changed it, but before that I actually wanted to go around and tighten everything um, to see what was actually the cause of um, my bed shaking all the time. I mean, that's really weird, my jumping test. Um, I think I've tightened it quite a fair bit that it's not shaking as badly. Because if I was to do this, it would made a really squeaky noise beforehand. But I know one of the, you know, like there's like central pieces that support the bed in the middle. One of them is missing a screw. So I'm going to my grandparents later on. I'm going to see if my granddad's got anything that I can put in there. Because I think that would really help if I sorted that out. Um, but yeah, it's really strange. It's not the actual frame of the bottom bed. It's these parts, like the bed ends or the headrest area, I guess, head headboard um, that are shaky. But it's just annoying. Literally, I can be turning in my sleep and it'll be like... <coughs> and it's just, it's kind of awkward, you know? So, yeah, I've just changed all that and I'm going to sit down. I might do some reading. I feel like I haven't read properly in a couple of days. I started um, Melmoth by Sarah Perry. It was really interesting, but I'm only like 26 pages in. Um, so, I don't know, maybe it's just I'm getting a little bit burnt out from all the reading I've been doing of late, even though they've been shorter books. But, yeah, I want to get some more of that read, actually. Um, I was intending to do a, a weekend reading vlog this weekend, but I've got some plans now and I don't think it's going to be feasible, so I'm going to try and leave it till the following weekend, hopefully get that up in April sometime. So those are the plans. <laughs> just finished Melmoth by Sarah Perry 
it was fantastic i gave it a 4.5 stars quite on the high end so you will see it on goodreads as a five stars this was absolutely amazing i don't want to gush too much because i have a feeling i want to do a separate video review i've already got um the review written up on goodreads if you did want to check that out instead but uh, it was a gothic literary fiction filled with this sense of doom and hopelessness but at the same time not it was just amazing our main character helen had such an interesting way of dealing with what she had done because it's obvious from the beginning it even says in the blurb i believe um that she's running from something um and it was just it was amazing i'm definitely gonna have to check out the essex essex serpent now because i really did enjoy this i think the only thing that stopped me from giving it a full five stars like technically is the fact that sometimes i would i would come out of the zone of reading and, and just find the writing style just too unique for me to grasp continuously it was very it was a different style than what i'm used to i guess um but yeah that was amazing i'm so glad i read this beautiful um version i'm guessing the special the personal essay from the author is the bit at the back about Melmoth's beginnings so if you do have this um, edition do go ahead and read that to see how she got the inspiration for the story but yeah this was fantastic totally would recommend this so I wasn't actually expecting to do any reading today this spot has come up well um, because I was at work but this morning I started this um, it is Legends of the Stars by Patrick Moore. It's one of my library books. And this evening, since I've been home, I've been going back and forth between watching um, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and reading some of these. So I'm sorry, I'm trying to hide my logo. Um, so, yeah, so far, it's not what I expected, really. It's actually easier to read than I thought. It's basically short stories of... Um, famous Greek stories basically um, and they're kind of the name the reason behind the constellations that we've got so yeah I'm enjoying it so far um, I'm probably gonna read some more of this whilst I'm in the bar I'm just running it now and then for the rest of the evening again I'll read a little bit of this watch Harry Potter I might watch Harry Potter straight through now I think I'm about 40 minutes in or something so after I've read a chunk of this in the bath I might just watch that until it's finished and then go back to this later on but yeah hopefully I finish it um relatively soon I actually wanted to do a reading vlog for the weekend so I won't talk too much about that book hopefully I get that done but I think I'm going to start it a little bit earlier which makes me feel like I'm cheating because then technically it's not a week weekend vlog but I'm still going to do that and yeah so hopefully two more books I can knock out this month I've been really productive with reading I'm really happy with myself actually so yeah. I've just finished Legends of the Stars by Patrick Moore this is really entertaining actually um I think I may have already mentioned that it's definitely more fable for fairy tale-esque Ellen. um i really did enjoy it though i think i give it like a 3.5 stars but quite a high one so again on goodreads you'll see it's probably like a four star um i did find quite a few typos that irritated me a little bit it wasn't too big of a deal but it's just something that i noticed so it's mildly irritating um what else i felt like it was kind of easier to get through because of the um storytelling aspect of it i wasn't expecting it to be so quite sing-song I guess you could say in that way um I like that we had a little bit of explanation about so this is why they have the constellations in the sky so we got the story of the hero or whatever and then afterwards it's like and this is how they end up being in the sky quite a few I think for all of it actually it was literal like the gods or whatever dragged them up to be immortalized in the sky and that's how we see them as constellations now um, and then we get explained and then we get told how to find them in the sky and what stars sort of make up different parts and where they are in reference to other constellations yeah so yeah really entertaining actually i think if you're interested more so in greek mythology rather than actual constellations this will be good for you because i thought this was going to be a bit more astronomical um if that's the word in terms of the constellations but it's not really it's more of the story behind them which it does say in the synopsis but i thought it was going to go like in a different direction but yeah still an enjoyable read 
So I have finished my final book of the month and that is, oh, 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 this book, Upside Down. Um, it's The City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I do have a complete reading vlog coming out for that, um, so I won't really be talking too much about it here now but i just wanted to quickly go over my stats for what i read during march um i'm really really happy i read a total of 14 books which is absolutely crazy i don't think i've ever read that many books in a month and a lot of them were actual like novels and stuff obviously i had some shorter novels and that but i think the only other time that i've really read near that amount is when i've read a lot of manga or graphic novels like things that i can get through really quickly but yeah i'm really proud of myself so i read five library loans which is awesome definitely using the library even more which was i think one of my goals um i haven't read any books from friends or family loans so in saying that the book that i'm borrowing from my cousin at the moment specifically is the skullduggery books but i haven't read any of those this month i read 13 physical books all in all and one kindle book so hopefully i can read you know get a few more of those um knocked out as i go through the months and yeah i'm just really really happy with what I managed to finish the quality of the books I've read like I've had quite a lot of four stars and three stars I think it's literally just been oh there's one 2.5 stars but I think other than that it's just been three stars and up no five stars though but there's been some 0.5s and stuff so yeah I'm really really happy um actually so oh I will want to quickly mention that I did buy a book on my Kindle hopefully I'll get to that soon I just decided to buy um uh the book called writing through depression by natalie i think her last name's roberts she used to have a youtube channel i don't think she does youtube anymore but she is someone that i follow on instagram she's always so lovely and she had like um a promotional sale going on at the moment so it's literally like 99p or something and i thought i want to get that i'm going to support her and yeah hopefully i get to that soon i didn't really know too much what it was about before but it was um she did like a flip through kind of comparing her regular font to the newer large font in books for people large font in large font books for people um that can't see as well as clearly shall i say um so seeing snippets of that i could sort of skim read sort of what was in it and it seems interesting to me so it's literally like writing through depression how it's helped her her story and so yeah hopefully i get to that shortly fingers crossed um but yeah that is my reading month again i keep repeating myself let me know what you've been reading. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog style version of it. I don't do these too, too often. I usually just do regular reading vlogs, but I don't know. It's probably a, a bit of a bitch to edit, but oh well. See you in another video soon.